We over here at Top 5 Scary Videos love a spooky story, a tale of the supernatural that folks tell around campfires to keep you up at night. However, not all of them are tales, some of them are born in reality, and some you may even be able to experience yourself, if you dare. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the Top 5 Scariest Unsolved Hauntings. Before I begin, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Hotel Monte Vista, Arizona. Hotel Monte Vista is a famous and historic hotel located one block north of US Route 66 in Flagstaff, Arizona. The hotel was built back in 1927 and is a centerpiece of the historic downtown district. However, it's become more popular for the otherworldly goings on inside its walls. Guests who have stayed in room 220 have experienced the TV changing channels on its own, and some even said they have felt cold hands touching them while they slept. However, arguably the most popular ghost story to emerge from the hotel is that of the phantom bellboy, who is said to knock on doors and announce room service, but when guests open their doors, no one's there. Another popular haunting and perhaps one of the most disturbing is the sound of an infant crying in the basement. I quote, Staff have found themselves running upstairs to escape the sound of the cries. Though the sounds are very real to those who hear them, there's been no information that has explained the phenomenon. That is a direct quote from the hotel's website. Spooky. Would you dare stay there? Coming in at 4, Ariana Grande's haunting. Now, we have a Hollywood ghost story at this number, coming from the mouth of none other than Ariana Grande. Yep, yeah, that's right. Ariana Grande was supposedly haunted by a ghost back in 2013 when she visited Stull Cemetery in Kansas, a place that is supposedly so scary the Pope refuses to fly over it because it's reputed to be one of the seven gates to hell. Yeah. Ariana explained to Complex, I quote, I felt this sick, overwhelming feeling of negativity over the whole car, and we smelled sulfur, which is the sign of a demon, and there was a fly in the car, randomly, which is another sign of a demon. That sounds like a stretch to me. I was like, this is scary, let's leave. I rolled down the window before we left and said, we apologize, we didn't mean to disrupt your peace. Then I took a picture, and there are three super distinct faces in the picture. They are faces of textbook demons. Demons. Now the story gets even creepier, stick with me. According to Ariana, when she tried to send the picture to her manager the next day, she was met with an error message that read, this file can't be sent, it's 666 megabytes. Weird things began to occur following the incident and Ariana was forced to delete the picture. I quote, I was going to sleep about two weeks ago, I had just gotten off the phone and as soon as I closed my eyes I heard this really loud rumble right next to my head. When I opened my eyes it stopped immediately, but when I closed my eyes it started again with whispers. Every time I closed my eyes I started seeing these really disturbing images with red shapes. Then I opened my eyes and scooched over to the left side of my bed, and there was this massive black matter. I don't know what it was, it was like a cloud of something black right next to me. I started crying. I watched it move to the front of my bed and then I fell asleep. I woke up and it was gone. Now. I'll be honest, it's hard for me to believe this one without the evidence to back it up, but if Ariana says it happened, then I guess it happened. Coming in at 3, please stop moving the kitchen table. Uploaded to My Uni Days by a user named Barbara, this story tells the haunting tale of ghosts that just won't stop messing with the kitchen table. I quote, my house was fraught with weird stuff happening when we first moved in. The kitchen table would move overnight 12 to 18 inches. My keys will disappear and show up in the weirdest places like my quilt trunk. I don't know who has a quilt trunk these days, but this person does. My son Christopher went into the basement and things came flying off the shelf at him. He also saw someone walking on our wraparound porch once, but no one was there. The most obvious one was a few years ago, twice this happened. I was sweeping the kitchen floor. The door to the porch started shaking uncontrollably, it was like someone was trying to open the door without turning the knob. It lasted about 15 seconds. Keep in mind this is a wraparound porch completely enclosed. I knew it was bad because my dogs, who will bark at a butterfly fly past the window, all looked up at the door and stepped back. Both times it happened, I was doing the same thing about the same time at night. By the way, as a side note, I walked into the kitchen table one night while going to the bathroom. It was not the first time I walked into the kitchen table because it was moved. So I just said, please stop moving the kitchen table, and it never moved again. Spooky stuff. Do you believe Barbara's story? And if so, who do you think the ghost was? Former resident of the home perhaps, or just someone who was obsessed with moving kitchen tables? Perhaps a former interior designer? You never know. You don't know the story. Coming in at number two, Demon in the Dark. 
Another creepy ghost story uploaded to my uni days, this one comes from a guy named Dave who explains his very real encounter with a scary demon. My family travelled to the south of France to stay in a cottage owned by someone my dad worked with. The owners visited occasionally but that summer it was free and we had 10 days booked in there. After a long 2 days on the road we drove down a steep driveway towards a secluded mill cottage, with the water wheel sat static alongside the stone house. There was a deep cellar with stone stairs down under the wheel next to the house. And a small river circled the place. We went into the house and chose rooms, but being set down in small copes the house was a draft and cold from lack of use. And we settled in and turned all of the heating on, yet the house remained cold and felt damp. The first night we had set a fire in the living room and listened to a couple of my audiobooks before my sister and I went to sleep. My parents stayed up a little longer than went to bed, around midnight they both woke up at exactly the same time and the door to their bedroom was opening, slowly. At first they thought it was my sister, until they saw a large dark silhouette of a man framed in the doorway, standing stock still, just looking in their direction as if appraising them. After a short period the shape turned and started to move as if satisfied and disappeared completely. They looked at each other but didn't speak and both went back to sleep. The next morning the house felt warm and dry and sunlight was back through the windows as if something had lifted and accepted them. They spoke the next day and both agreed that although they were skeptics it could not have been anything other than something supernatural in that doorway, deciding their worth. What do you guys think about that one? Demon encounter? Intruder? Or just trick of the light? Do you think there was a man there or is this all pretend? You tell me. I think it was just an old house that took a little while to heat up. But that's not very scary, is it? And finally, coming in at number one, Hotel Cecil. Uh, of course, there is no building more haunted than the Cecil Hotel that has numerous unexplained deaths and hauntings that are still ongoing today, even after it changed its name to Stay on Main. Creepier still, there's an entire list of suicides reported on its Wikipedia page, with the first reported case happening in 1931, followed by a long string of similar deaths in 1932, 1934, 1937, 1938. 1939 and 1940. The 30s were not a good time for the Cecil, that's for sure. During the same time, other tenants of the building also died by suicide, and one man was pinned to the exterior wall by a truck. In 1962, a woman jumped from the ninth floor window and landed on a pedestrian, killing them both. In 1964, tenant Goldie Osgood was brutally murdered, which had remained unsolved. And of course, one of the most famous cases is that of Elisa Lamb, a 21 year old traveller who was found dead in the rooftop water tank of the hotel. Hotel after guests began to complain of a funky taste. Now, with this number, it isn't so much the ghosts themselves that are the unsolved haunting, but the hotel itself, which seems to curse anyone who stays in it or near it. Well, there we have it. Let me ask you this Do you guys believe in the supernatural? If so, do you have any stories of your own? If you do, leave me your scariest encounters in the comments down below and I'll be responding to some of the spookiest. Before I go, though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of my last videos Top 5 Worst Horror Movies. Movie endings part 2. Eternal Communism 1974 said Lucy McPhee, with you, there's always a happy ending. I don't know how to interpret that. Who did you speak to? Also, you're not wrong. Homer J. Nick said, Lucy, I hope you pledge your allegiance to Leeds United just like Jack did recently. Ha, ha. That's a good one. I'm an Arsenal fan through and through. If you have a problem with that, I kindly ask you to leave before Dark Lucy emerges. Arsenal, forever. Robert Rudolph said, More Lucy, less guy with beard. The pale goddess has spoken, so mote it be. Ah, the people have spoken. Jack must be taken down. More pale queen, less beard. No one likes a beard. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later.